Well, hello and welcome. It is Thursday and it's Knitting and Stitching show day in Harrogate. I was hoping to record myself getting ready and everything, but it's also a school morning. So yeah, getting the kids ready and all that. Like, it didn't quite work out how I wanted it, this nice leisurely pace. <laughs> it was more frantic than that. But anyway, I thought I'd come on and quickly say hello. I'm just about to set off now. I've charged my car to 100% overnight, so I'm all organised. I've brought a backpack with me instead of a um, cross-shoulder bag so that I've got my hands free <laughs> to feel fabric. And I'm now just going to go and pick my mum up and our friend Carol, and then we're going to head over to Harrogate. So we tend to go early. Um, because the car parts can get quite busy. We tend to go early and then we go to Weatherspoons, have a little cheeky cup of tea and some breakfast. And then we go, uh, this is the strategy. This is the strategy I'm telling you about now. Then we go into the convention center, have a really good look around for a couple of hours try and spot loads of things and then we go to a lovely restaurant called Piccolino's which is literally a two minute walk from the convention center. Have a lovely lunch, normally completely overindulge like you do and then we go back into the show and then go and buy things and have a bit more of a look around because it's a lot quieter in the afternoon so that's a strategy sometimes you dip out if you don't buy things straight away though but we are going on Thursday instead of Friday this time so we normally go on a Friday um however this time I forgot that I was actually going to Ireland to see my best friend and so I yeah We've had to go on a Thursday instead, but I'm quite looking forward to it because it's the setup of the show, things won't have sold out, etc. Hopefully, so it might be a good thing. So, I'm just off to get them now, and then I'll catch up with you when we're there. So I'm back home already. When I say already, it's actually 10 past six for me. <laughs> so we were there till the bitter end. I know I didn't take much footage, but all I can say is when we got there this morning, we got there early, went to Weatherspoons and had a coffee and some breakfast, went to the show for half past 10 and I have never seen it so busy <laughs> in all my morn days. I thought with going on the Thursday that actually it might be a little bit um, less crowded but I believe that is the day that a lot of the coaches go apparently. It was so busy that actually it was difficult to kind of shop at all so we did an hour or two there and then we went and had lunch a bit earlier so we popped and had some lunch which I might have put some pictures in of already um, and then we came back I can't remember what time it was maybe about half past two and it was blissful. Bearing in mind it's open till five o'clock. So if you're not too keen on crowds, 
my recommendation to you in future, if you were to go, would be to maybe go in the afternoon. You could go in early in the morning, have a mooch around Harrogate, maybe go for some lunch and then head off into the convention centre maybe about two, three o'clock. Um, but it was just so nice to go back. So then we had a really good look round everywhere, went and had a chat with everybody. Um, yeah, we've just had a really, really lovely day. Um, I met so many people, loads of lovely people came up and approached me. Excuse me, that's my tumble dryer. Um, and it was just, it was just a lovely day, it always is. And um, I'll show you maybe tomorrow when I get a chance what my purchases were, you might be surprised. Um, but it was just lovely to see everybody. Um, I think a lot of people were saying that it's kind of gone back to pre-COVID time and that's why it was so busy. Um, but yeah, I've had a fabulous day. For anybody wanting to know what I'm wearing, I am actually wearing my new Lyra dress. And this is the fabric that I've just received from my Think Pink box from Beyond the Pink Door. So I've made the Lyra with the long sleeves. I'm a bit creased now because I've been in it all day. Um, and I did it with just one tier, not two. And it was lovely. And then I also wore my Berlin coat as well, my Tasuti uh, Berlin jacket over the top. And I got lots of very nice compliments, so thank you. So yeah, for anybody who did come up and speak to me, I'd just like to say thank you very much. I know sometimes it can be a bit weird when you're going up and speaking to someone that you don't know. Um, but I do appreciate it. it was really nice. I had a really good chat to loads of loads of lovely people. So yeah, I'm gonna take my boots off, snuggle my kids for a bit and relax tonight because, oh, I don't know what's going on in my hair. Um, tomorrow I'm heading off for the weekend. So I've got some packing to do as well. That's a good point. <laughs> Forgot about that. But yeah, I'll, um, I'll sign off now and um, speak to you and show you my purchases when I've had a chance. Right, it's the day after. So it's Friday. I've had a kip. Boy, did I need it. I was out like a light last night. I was so tired. My feet were throbbing. But I suppose that's the good thing, isn't it, about going to these shows is you get to kind of have a really good look round and you spend all day doing what you love best, which is shopping for sewing stuff. <laughs> now, I thought I'd quickly pop on and just show you what I purchased, which wasn't a lot. OK, so obviously I went with my mum and Carol and my mum was definitely first out of the starter box. <laughs> so we hadn't even got through one of the halls and she was like, I'm having that, I'm having that, I'm having that, I'm having that. And then she kind of dried up a little bit and then Carol overtook because <laughs> Carol's started sewing over the last few years as well. And she had a very particular Vogue jacket pattern that she wanted to get fabric for. And she managed to find it as well, which was amazing. So she was really good in the fact that she'd gone there with a plan. She knew what she wanted. So we were hunting everywhere. To be fair, the base fabric that she wanted was a black wool. And could we find black wool anywhere? It was hard work. Everybody, I think, wanted all the colour. So there wasn't much of that kind of thing. But anyway, we did find it in the end. So she managed to get everything for her Vogue thing. And then I think I brought up the rear. A bit like a relay race really and then I kind of got a few bits towards the end so yeah now I love going to these events and I think I love it for a few reasons a I get to spend some really good quality time with my mum which is lovely and that's why we go every year did I do a or did I do one b or two <laughs> is chatting to all the amazing people there so the stall holders that I know and um the businesses that are there um three is chatting to all the people that kind of approach me and say hello and say that they watch my channel it's absolutely fantastic and then latterly comes the purchasing now i know for other people that might be the other way around but for me that is what it is and that's probably because you know i do have a decent size stash it's not huge by any stretch of the imagination but i have a decent amount of fabric and i certainly didn't go with a plan of i definitely want this um, I did want some fabric to make a cardigan and I've purchased that, which is really good. But I think you might be a bit bored with what I, um, what I bought <laughs> because it wasn't a lot. So it's not a massive haul that I'm going to be showing you. But yes, like I say, I did buy one fabric. So I'll show you that first. Sorry for all the creepers in the bag. And I would like to make a cardigan. Um, now, 
there was quite a lot of fabric shops there which was brilliant there was like jenny stitches was there she we walked past her stall a couple of times and she was so maxed out bless her she looked frazzled <laughs> it was bonkers um so i didn't actually get back to see jenny to have a good chat with her because she was just so busy um rainbow fabrics were there higgs and higgs were there um who else was there? So Me Something was there with loads of stuff. Emporia Patterns was there with loads of stuff. The lovely Laura from So Different had all of her beautiful new fabrics there. So there was quite a lot of fabric choice, which was great. Then there was um, a few of the stores, I can never remember the names, where they have the massive rolls on the big tables. Now, I like those stores because they have a lot of unique fabrics, but I'm just not one for having to delve through loads and loads of rolls of fabric. I don't know. Are you one of the people that loves doing that? Or you're like me and I'm kind of like, oh, I can't be bothered. Um, and they're always very crowded, aren't they? So there was a few of them. There was about three or four of them. And then there was a lot of fabric stores that kind of had more of the like crafting, quilting type of thing as well. So it was a really good variety and obviously plenty of stuff for people that knit as well. And my mum's a knitter, so that was really nice. But I, whenever I go to one of those shows, I always love the Higg and Higg, Higgs and Higgs stand. Um, because it's always laid out beautifully um, and so I got to have a really good look without having to rummage if you know what I mean and I quite like that because then you can kind of stand back and still have a look at everything even though there's lots of people there whereas when there's all the rolls laid out on the table there's people kind of stood there and it's quite hard to get in so I chose a fabric and you're going to be gobsmacked <laughs> what is going on but I bought this one oh, there's loads of bits of fluff on it I need to do fluff it and it's a black cable knit fabric from Higgs and Higgs. And I love it. Now, I think when we went to the Knit and Institution show at Ali Pali last year, Tamlin said she really liked this fabric. Um, and I'd fallen in love with it as well. And they had a few different colours, but nothing that were kind of my colours. And I've been after a really nice black cardigan for quite some time to go with pretty much everything. I've just got to decide on the actual cardigan. Now, both Tamlin and Rachel have got the carry cardigan um, in like a chunk in it, which I really, really love. So I don't know if I might give that a try and just like blatantly copy them <laughs> or whether to give a different cardigan pattern. Um, I do have another one that I have been thinking about. I can't remember the name of it now, but I don't know if I'd need more than two metres because that's what I bought. So I think it was £15 a metre. No, it was less than that. I can't remember. Oh, let's have a look. I've got my receipt. It was twenty-seven ninety-eight altogether. So it was 14 quid a metre. Um, and I've got two metres of that to make something. So that is the only fabric I bought. So what? I know. Bonkers, eh? So then we had a good look around everywhere and stuff. And we were having a look at a lot of the cross-stitch places because I cross-stitch and my mum really fancied doing one as well. And she saw in one of the cross-stitch shops this particular design that she wanted and they didn't have it in stock. They only had it in a picture up on the wall and some they'd obviously sold out. But we managed to find it in the end, which was good at another stall. But when we were on the stall, I was looking at these needlework frames. And I've seen them everywhere recently, um, but I didn't quite work out how they worked. And I was a bit like dismissive of it but then when I was at this store a lady showed me how they worked and I was like oh my goodness so this is it here and it's called a snap a Q snap needlework frame so at the moment I use an embroidery hoop I've got like um, a rubber one that you can like prise over or the wooden ones that you kind of have to screw together and I always struggle with the tension of it and also it always makes my needlework, my cross stitch is a little bit dirty on the Ada that I'm using. So then afterwards I have to wash it and, and dry it, etc. And it annoys me. However, she assured me that won't happen with these. So it's kind of like a little snap framework. And you can get them in different sizes. I've got the eight by eight inches. And they literally just clip onto your embroidery work and then they just slide off. Mm -hmm. So you're not leaving big indents either in your fabric, which I thought was really good because I do struggle with ironing those out afterwards. So, yeah, my mum um, treated me to one of these because um, she um, I bought her ticket for the show. So she said, why don't I treat you to one of these? So she bought one and I bought one and I'm looking forward to giving that one a go. Looks amazing. 
And then the only other, oh, and then I saw this on one of the stands. I don't know if I should show this because my friend might be watching it. But my bestie Claudia is a photographer. Um, so this is Claudina that I went to Germany with. And I saw this and I thought, oh my goodness. And it's like a print for a camera. And I just loved it. So I bought that for her and I don't know what I'm going to make with it. So if you're watching this, Claudia, let me know what you'd prefer to have made with this. I didn't know whether to make a tote bag or a cushion or just frame it for in a studio. I'm not too sure. So, but I loved it. They had it in black and they had it in this like green colour, but I loved that. That was not too expensive. So I bought that for her. And then I went and had a really good chat a couple of times actually with Victoria from Little Rosy Cheeks and Jen from Generates. And I'd seen some labels from Victoria that I wanted and I kind of thought, well, I know she's going to be at the show, so I'll go and buy them from her then. And I'd seen a couple of things that Jen had done um, and I thought, well, I'll go and check those out while I'm there as well. So I did go and buy some labels from the beautiful Victoria. I'm going to actually open them because I think it's always hard to see in the packets. Their stand was just crazy bonkers. I had to go back to chat to them. So I got these ones that say, I made this. And on the back, it says, and it feels good. I love those. I think they're really cute. So I got those. And then I got these ones, which I've never had. These are an oldie, but I think in a different colour format this time. Um, and they say, handmade. Can you see that? handmade with a bit of glitter on so and there's pink ones and then there's also these blue ones as well which I love so I got them as well and there was an offer if you got three packets I can't remember you got a discount even better um and then the other pack that I got was these so these are the ones that I've been looking at for ages and just kept hanging on until I saw the and these ones, you do you. I love the colourways on that. I love the saying on it. It's you do you, boo. And then, I don't know if you know, you probably do, that um, Victoria's also started doing her own patterns, which is amazing. And she asked if I wanted to try all this T-shirt for my boys. And it was really weird that she said it, actually, because only the day before I was thinking about... Um, making my eldest um a t-shirt and maybe some pajamas but the pattern that i have been using in the past he's not liking very much anymore because it's quite a slimline pattern and he's looking a bit for the oversized kind of trendy look now so it was really weird when she said would you like one of these you to try out so i'm going to give this a go and that's from sizes three age three all the way up to age 14 so that'll cover both my boys and it does come in both a short sleeve and also a long sleeved. Mm. So I think I might give both of them a go. And from a fabric perspective, if you're using 150 centimetre wide, for the short sleeve, for the, you're up to eight years old, you need a metre, and then just over a metre for anything above that. And for the long sleeve, it's between one and a quarter metres and 1.4. So I think I'll be making that up. And as a gift as well, she gave me that to go inside them. These are so cute. Let me have a look. I haven't actually delved into this. So let's have a look what's in this one because it is really cute. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's like a pack of loads of different ones. Oh, <laughs> that says write your own destiny. And that's like a big patch. Oh, I love these. This one says look sharp. There's two of those. And then there's two of these with just pencils all over. Oh. They are brilliant. And then two of these. Oh, doesn't this remind you of being back at school when you had a HB pencil? Oh, love it. So I've got those as well. So there's two of the smaller ones, two of the white ones with the pencils on, and then two of the green ones that say look sharp. And then you've got that patch as well. That is really good value. So I've got those. So I was just, it was lovely having a chat with them. And then next up, I bought some stuff from Jen. <laughs> so she was giving little demonstrations to me of, of stuff. Now, I know a lot of people have mentioned this recently about hot hemmers. And I do have one. <laughs> what is that? This is my hot, hot hemmer. And it's a clover one. And I love it. I use it all the time. 
The only thing I struggle with is this is in Imperial rather than Metric. And also it doesn't have any curve to it or anything like that. So you can only do straight lines on it. However, Jen's one is amazing because you've probably seen all these before. Oh, hello. That is all, uh, it's like um, a plastic, a silicon. And then it's got like these edges that you can do pockets with, a less curved edge. And then, then look at this. But if you've got a curved hem or anything, it keeps flopping about. And then also you've got all of these marks as to where the centimetres are and you can put your pins and things through them. So it's got demonstrations on the back as well of how you can use it and it's awesome. She also uses uh, like a felt board to do a lot of her work when she was demonstrating. I was like, hmm, quite like the look of that. So I got that. And then the other thing, which is cross-stitch related really, that I'd seen that she'd recently designed, designed was a pattern tracker. So let me get this out how lovely is that so upside down it's a pattern tracker how cute so so you can see the bottom comes off and what you do is you put your um cross stitch pattern in here and then you clamp that over the top of it and then you can use it to go up and down so that you know where you are on your cross stitch how good is that? And I'm assuming that that's a needle holder and a pin holder as well. It's brilliant, isn't it? So I did indulge in one of these because they um, aren't cheap, quite rightly so, because they've been handmade and everything. They're amazing. So um, I did treat myself to one of these as well, and I can't wait to get using that. So I'll have my new little snap framework, and then I'll also have my little pattern tracker as well. And that, ladies and gentlemen is all I bought. I know. Talk about an angel. Hey, hey. Um, but yeah, like I say, sometimes I get a bit overwhelmed when I go to places like that. It's almost like there's too much choice for me to cope with. I'm like that with um, food menus as well, to be honest. <laughs> Give me a food menu with just five choices and I'm fine. Give me one with 20 and I'll be there for about half an hour. But yeah, but had a fabulous time. Absolutely amazing time. Loved every minute of it. And I hope if anybody else gets to go that you have as good a time as I did. Um, and if you've got opportunity, I know um, a lot of people don't have something like that in their area, but I would definitely recommend giving it a go. If you saw my footage as well in Harrogate, they have the massive hall as well, which has got like the theatre part of it and everything in it. And you've got plenty of seating in there to sit down because I know in a lot of places there's not an awful lot of places to sit down. But there's that huge hall where you can go and sit and have lunch and a cup of tea and things like that as well. So... That was, um, that, I think that's a really nice addition to the place that they've opened that up for you to be able to do that. But yeah, give it a go if you can. I think it's worth it. And I think my ticket was £17.50. And I think for the day it was well worth it. Yeah, really enjoyed it. So I hope you enjoyed my very quick vlog on what I did when I went to the Knitting and Stitching show yesterday. Hope everybody's well. I hope everybody's had lots of time to sew. And I'll see you again very soon. Take care. Bye.